I'm going to show you how to do a landscape in Google Drawings. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, right click on the background and then I'm going to select background and you can use a solid color but I think the gradient one actually looks kind of cool sometimes too. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a sky by going into shapes, selecting the rectangle and I'm going to go all the way up to the corner and then drag my rectangle down to right about the middle of the background and I'm going to use a gradient for that one too. So do you guys see how it's lighter up here and darker down here? You want that to be reversed. So you want the lighter part to be at the bottom if you're using the gradient. So what I'm going to do is go to arrange, rotate, flip vertically, and then this line right here that separates the ground from the sky, that's called the horizon line. That's going to be important later. I'm also going to select this background. We don't need the, um, the line, the outline there. And then you have a choice of a river, a road, a path, um, something that's going to create some sort of perspective. So I'm going to show you how to do a road first and we're gonna use the polyline tool for that. So right on my horizon line, I'm gonna click, bring it all the way down to the bottom, click again, take it straight across the bottom of the page, click again, and then I'm gonna bring it back up and I'm gonna connect it to the starting point. So let's say I want this to be a road, I'm gonna make that black, and then I can also add a line down the middle like a dashed line for those yellow lines select yellow i'm going to go right back up to that point right there it's called the vanishing point that's the point where things seem to vanish into the distance so i'm going to click and then bring that line down to kind of like mimic the outline of the road and then there you go that's your road uh, i'm going to show you a river next so a river, I use the curve tool for that. And I'm going to click again um, on that horizon line. And the river needs to start out um, skinnier and then get wider as it gets towards the base of the page. So I'm just clicking each time with the mouse. And then I'm going to go straight across the bottom again. And I'm going to try and mimic that same line that I made. not mean to do that. Let's try that one more time. So the important thing with the perspective is that it needs to be skinnier towards the top of the page and then wider as it reaches the bottom of the page. And then double click. So I've got my river. And then I can use the, um, the gradient fill for that one too. That looks kind of nice. If you want that to be a path, I mean, you can kind of do that a similar way by just clicking the gradient and making it like a path color. I can also do um, a sidewalk, pretty much similar to the way I did the road with the polyline tool. You can do a sidewalk and a road, too. So those are a few examples of how to create perspective using Google Draw. Okay, I'm going to show you a few different things you can do in the background. Uh, the first option I'm going to show you would be mountains. So to do mountains, I select the polyline tool. And I'm going to go right on that horizon line and go straight across. Then kind of just make some mountainy shapes. And then connect the line. I think the gradient looks pretty good for mountains. 
And then it also looks nice to create some different layers by using that polyline tool again in front of the first one and then changing either the color or the style of gradient. And I can do that a couple times just to create some depth. All right, so there's mountains. Uh, another option, you can use the curve line to make either like a hills or like forests in the background. So same thing, I'm gonna hang out on that horizon line and then connect it back. And then that, that one is hard to get like a flat bottom, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So either hills or trees like that. And the same thing as I did with the mountains. I think it looks nice if you add a few different layers to create depth. So that would be hills. Um, another option would be a city in the background. And to do the city, I just um, use this like rectangle tool and you want to keep the city pretty dark because this would be pretty far away so you wouldn't be able to see it like the details and stuff on the buildings and you can also add gradient to those there's a few additional shapes that i think work for buildings um actually they're in the yeah up here like this one right here And then with the buildings, same as with the um, mountains and the hills, it looks good if you layer some on top of others. You can even look at a real city skyline for some inspiration. Some of them solid and some of them gradient. So we've got city, hills, mountains. Um, you can do something else for your background. Those are just three options that I'm giving you. But that is how you create a background. We have the perspective and we have the background. I'm going to show you now how to create a house or a building in the foreground. So you're going to want to start with the rectangle. And then you can select whatever color you want. And then I was adding another rectangle to make like a garage. That's an option. And then for the roof, you can do a couple different things. Um, this one. I feel like it looks more like a business kind of roof. And you can even use the text tool if you are making your building a business to add text to it. It looks like a pizza hut. Uh, and then another option for the roof, I used um, the triangle shape like this. Try and match that side. 
You might have to adjust the shape of the other roof. Oh. And you can also do the traditional triangle roof on top of the house too. There we go. So then I can add a door with a rectangle. And I can also add windows. You can do uh, control C and then control V to copy and paste them so that they're the same. And then I can use the polyline tool to kind of make like a, like a driveway that connects to the road. And add some more details to the house. I can um, change the outline color there. I think it's blue. Um, I can add some details to the house by using shapes like um, this. I think this is a cloud shape, but it works like nice for little shrubs too. And there you go, that's a house or a building. I'm gonna show you how to use size, detail, and overlapping to create the illusion of space. So you're gonna to wanna to think of an object um, that you had in your foreground, and I'm gonna do um, trees. And I'm gonna use this shape right here for the trunk of the tree. You can also always use um, custom gradient. And then I'm going to use that cloud shape for the top of the tree. And then I'm going to combine them by selecting both parts and going into arrange group and then I'm going to control C and control V to copy and paste. Um, you want to have three of the same objects and you should have a big one, a medium one, I'm going to hold down shift to keep the proportions, and a small one. And then the big one should have the most detail. So I'm going to use the scribble tool to just add some detail to the top part of this tree. So then you want the biggest one to be in the front, you want the medium one to be in the middle, and then you want the small one to be in the back. And you can make the medium one and the small one overlap each other. Just make sure you go into a range order, ring to front, so that the one in front is actually overlapping the one in back. And then I'm going to make that detail part of the tree too by going into a range group. And then other things that you can add to your landscape, you can add um, like a pond, and I use the curve tool for the pond. And 
you can add moon or sun. You can add stars, and those are in the callouts. And then for those, I was just doing like control C, control V to copy and paste and using my my arrow keys to move them around because they're so tiny. You can add flowers and I was using, there's different, um, if you go into the, the call outs, there's different um, points. This one has got 10 point star, 12 point star. make little flowers and you can do the control C control V to make more of those too so those are a few options for different details that you can add um, you can add more shrubs like this um, I was using these shapes to make signs on the road arrange and then um, order bring that one to the front so you can add any kind of details that you want but you need to fill up your space so make sure in order to get a 10 out of 10 for creativity that you've got that um, size uh, detail and overlapping and that you don't have a lot of empty space